Hello, this is Dr. Mercola, and you know that three out of four people believe that their vision is their most important sense. This is probably related to the fact that 80% of the information we take in from our environment comes in through our eyes. Well, unfortunately, most of us, or many of us, have, don't have ideal vision and tend to resort to other interventions to help to restore that to the point that we can see better. And many people use eyeglasses and I want to tell you now if you don't know already that that is not an ideal way to compensate for this because eyeglasses were never designed to to be the perfect solution and part of this is related to the fact that you when you have less than perfect vision it is not a static process in other words there's a your eyesight will change gradually better and worse throughout the day and what an, what an eyeglass is is it's a fixed correction and it will partially correct maybe ideally correct for it sometimes in the day but the other times it's going to it's going to be off so it's really not the perfect way to do this and uh, hopefully if it's it's reasonably close to what the the visual dysfunction is you'll be able to see better but invariably with time everyone who's wearing a corrective lens will worsen their vision with time which is you know, it's not going to improve you. You'll just get worse. So, and this is true for contact lenses. It's also true, even worse, for LASIK. And I don't have time to go into the specifics now, but for the further down this page, there's additional information you can read to find out more about that. But interestingly, um, this is particularly tragic for children because in some countries, uh, less than 2% of the children are wearing glasses, where in other countries it's over 50%. And there's been some researchers who studied this very carefully, and when they looked at uh, these uh, non-developed countries, over 200 of them, in which there were, there were not eating large amounts of grains and refined foods, that less than 2% of the population was wearing glasses. And that the moment they started to introduce these foods into their diet, they, they, it radically started to increase and the people started to lose their vision. So this is a major clue that our diet has something to do with it. And it's probably related to the fact that when you have these grains and sugars and processed foods, your insulin tends to rise and that causes metabolic dysfunctions and insulin growth factors and that, have to have, that seem to have an effect and an impact on your vision. But if you are a child, I believe it's particularly tragic because children are the, tend to be the best group that responds most dramatically to these natural interventions we'll talk about in a moment. So some simple strategies you can do to limit the likelihood that your child will be wearing glasses would to be make sure that they visit the right specialist because if they're going to see a general optometrist or an OD, uh, the likelihood that they'll be prescribed glasses is about 35%, one in three chance. If in fact they see an MD ophthalmologist, uh, a specialist in eye diseases, that decreases to about 12%. But if they see a subspecialist, a pediatric ophthalmologist, the likelihood goes down to about 2%. So just by picking your specialist uh, properly, you'll, you'll radically reduce the likelihood of your child going on. Uh, glasses. So what are the options then? I mean obviously you can improve the diet as we mentioned but you know there's there, many of us it's not going to be enough and uh, fortunately about a hundred years ago there was a an incredibly uh, innovative pioneering renegade physician his name was Dr. Bates and uh, he st first started practicing about 1900 and for 30 years he compiled a number of incredible strategies and actually developed uh, using an instrument called the retinoscope to do comprehensive uh, physical examinations on tens of thousands of patients to support his his findings and his recommendations but he was able to help tens of thousands of people recover their vision completely without the use of any surgery or any glasses or corrective lenses so it's just really astonishing and in fact in uh, it, his, his, his approach was so effective that uh, in New York, where he was practicing, he actually attended uh, Cornell uh, Medical College, he, um, they actually made it illegal. The, the uh, other uh, eye care professionals actually lobbied the, the legislature there and made it illegal to practice the Bates method because they were afraid of the competition that he was providing. So in fact, it's still illegal today. But nevertheless, um, his, his books and materials are available. There have been a number of teachers who teach, the, who's taught this throughout the years, and literally there's probably hundreds of thousands of people who recovered their vision using this method, and I happen to be one of them. Uh, interestingly, um, about 
it was eight or nine years ago now, I went on a health cruise and we were sitting at a table and uh, most of us were older than, at least in the mid 40s. And there was about a dozen of us and uh, there was only one person at the table who w didn't require the use of reading glasses to read the menu. And that person was 20 years older than everyone else. I thought that was astonishing. So of course I, I asked him about it and he shared with me that he had actually uh, received training 20 years previous to that uh, with the Bates method and it had seen for the last 20 years could did not require the use of glasses. I thought that was astonishing so much so that when I got back home from the cruise I quickly scheduled a visit and, and, and did the training. It cost me a few thousand dollars but it was one of the best investments I ever made because now I rarely ever require the use of reading glasses. I, I keep them around for emergencies because in very low light situations or very tiny print where I almost need a magnification to read it I will require it but I would say that's only a few times a year. So for the most part, I do not require the use of reading glasses. So it's really extraordinary and really one of the best health uh, strategies, interventions that I, I've ever done. And let me just share with you a few of those um, principles because I think they could help you too. And the key is that, is, is that it's not that your muscles are too weak because many people when they think of a natural health strategy, think, well, I'm gonna do some type of exercise. I have weak, weak eyes. I have to exercise my muscles. Well, that is absolutely not the case because most of the time, this visual dysfunction, this less than perfect vision is a result of having muscles that are too strong. In fact, they're constantly contracted, they're tense, and they're under strain. And the key to improving that is to have this mental relaxation that goes through and causes those eye muscles to relax so that your eyes can function properly and they can have perfect focus. And that really is the central core of all the strategies to help you recover your vision, is this focus on relaxation. And it really is profound because it has other benefits in your life, not just being able to see properly, but other benefits. Of course, many of you are familiar with benefits that uh, relaxation strategies has from, from meditation and prayer and other approaches. So this is one of them is that you can see better. Specifically, there's some little uh, tips that you might like and I think that you might find helpful. One of them is to understand that um, you typically do not want to squint. Now when you're reading uh, print that's hard to see, you'll tend to want to squint. And because why? Because it works and you will be able to temporarily see a little better. But that is one of the worst things you can do. And if you find yourself or catch yourself squinting, you want to stop that immediately. And beyond that too, you want to notice any tension around your eyes. So if you're reading on the computer screen or a book and you just notice that there's a little bit of a, a semi-minor squint there, you just want to consciously relax. So you do that all the time, to check in to make sure that you're not doing that behavior because that squinting is going to make your vision worse. And the alternative that you uh, strategy that you can use to, if you need to see better for a specific print is to blink. Blink your eyes very rapidly and that will it, help your muscles relax and will help you to focus and you'll begin to see, see much clearer. Now another strategy is that you want to avoid the use of sunglasses. Anyway, that may sound like a contradiction because if you're in the sun, you're going to want to squint. Well, you can easily compensate for that by wearing a hat or a cap like I do. And uh, this way you'll, your eyes will be in the shade, you won't be squinting. But when, if you wear glasses, pretty much any type of, of glass will filter out many of the beneficial wavelengths that are in, the, in sunlight. And there's at least 1,500 wavelengths that you need to nourish the retina. And if you're not getting those wavelengths, you're going to, your uh, eye health will be challenged. Uh, so that's clearly uh, another benefit. Do not wear sunglasses. So there are certain cases where you're going to want to do that, such if you're boating or if you're uh, uh, skiing down a bright, on a bright sunny day on the slopes, you know, that, well, that you're going to have way too much sunshine, so that, that there may be useful, but that's pretty much few and far between. Now, another approach that you can um, implement is when you're on the computer, many of you uh, use your computers regularly, that is to avoid the temptation to increase the size of the font. So it's easy to do, it's, it makes it a lot easier to read, but unfortunately, it's one of the, it's a, it's a really uh, a, a not a good approach if you want to preserve your vision and improve your vision because you want to continuously challenge your vision with progressively tinier, tinier fonts. So if you can see tiny fonts, of course, you're going to be able to see the larger ones. So don't increase the size of your font. It's really easy to do if you're in a Word document or something. You just can make your, your, you know, your enlarger document from 100% to 150% or a PDF document. And of course, it's really easy to read, but it's going to worsen your vision, just like wearing glasses or corrective lens as well. So, you know, seeing great without the use of corrective lenses is, is really, unfortunately, it's the minority of us who do that. And, and typically and invariably as people age and they get beyond the age of, 
of uh, the mid 40s or so, most people require the use of reading glasses. It's very rare where someone doesn't. So, um, but this, the Dr. Bates method works for, for the people like myself who require reading glasses, but it also works for, for, for people who uh, are nearsighted and need glasses for, for far dist for distance vision. So it's a really an amazing set of tools. Please try the recommendations that are on this page. And if it's uh, not improving your vision like you would like, uh, we I've felt so strongly about this, I actually put together a course that goes into more specific details that's available and it's really uh, an amazing resource and it's helped thousands of people this course help recover their vision. So hopefully this information will be helpful for you and your family because a great site is such an important part of taking control of your health.